The smell is not coming out. It's there for life. What's up guys and welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm gonna take you out into the thrift and show you what I look for when I'm buying shirts to resell on eBay and Poshmark. After the little thrifting trip, I'll talk to you about why I sell shirts and shorts on eBay and Poshmark in addition to shoes and how I go about finding those items and what I'm looking for in order to know that they are a good item for reselling. So with that being said, let's jump into the thrift store and see what we can find. All right, jumping into this thrift store, all clothes are 50% off, they're really well priced. I'm looking for shirts and shorts. All right, the great thing about this thrift store is the 50% off sale. They also have this $1 rack that's outside and I noticed in the post-production of this video that there was a sign in the window that states that the third Sunday of each month, all clothing is $1. So definitely going to take advantage of that. Uh, marking my calendar for the third Sunday in April when I'll be able to jump into this store and buy clothing for $1 each. All right, so going through this rack of $1 items, I only found this one shirt that is a Hollister shirt. Normally I would not buy that if it were two, three, four dollars but a buck, I bought it just to see what we can do with it. Uh, going through this rack of shirts here, there was nothing really there. I decided to check out the shoes. However, this thrift store is notorious for their expensive shoes. $25 or $24 on those pair of Nikes. And then this pair of Champions right here. They wanted $8 on these. However, the Champion brand is not uh, at all good for me. Going through the sweaters and jackets, I found a couple that were uh, interesting and I was able to pick up. And I'll share those with you in just a moment, including this Vineyard Vines quarter zip sweater. Starting all the way at the end of the shirts, going through the top, then the bottom, and then moving down the sections and top through bottom. Uh, going quickly here, found this Vans shirt, found a, found a Nautica polo, found another Nautica polo. Uh, you can see continuing to go down through the shirts. Now this is a very long thrifting trip, and so I did not want to bore you with just me looking at shirts. I cut a lot of the fluff out. I did decide to go through the electronics and see what I could find. Uh, then stopping to do my quality check, I did buy both men's and women's stuff. I was pretty burned out by the time I got to the women's section, so I only picked up a few items, but we're gonna test and see how it goes. Heading on down to the register. I have another, I have another bag, yes. Do we need it? Yeah. Okay. Q1307. All right. Thank you. There you go. 130.07. Got your receipt right here. All right. <laughs> All right. That's what I like to see. Thank you. All right. So at this store, I was able to pick up 40 items, which included uh, 39 shirts and sweaters, and then one pair of jeans. Unfortunately, they did not have any shorts. I think it's because it's not quite summertime yet, and uh, that's not an item that's going to sell very well. So they hold that inventory back until summertime arrives. So what we have here are 40 items. I'm going to go through really quickly and show you the brands uh, that I bought that I'm picking up and then explain why I'm picking up these brands, my pricing strategy, and then what I look for in a shirt when I purchase it. All right. So starting off from this side first, we've got an Oakley shirt here. I've got a Nike sleeveless. Uh, it's a Nike pro, a sleeveless workout shirt or running shirt. I've got a Nike sphere, uh, kind of that honeycomb material, a Nike sphere shirt. I've got a women's Nike golf jacket. It's a zip jacket. Unfortunately, this did not have the belt on it. And so uh, we did not get the belt, but this jacket should sell fairly well without the belt. I got a basic Nike baseball style shirt here. All right, so next we have seven Izod shirts. These shirts vary from polos to button downs. Uh, we've got stripes, we've got plaids. Izod just does really well for me in the pricing strategy that I use. And so these uh, these do really well. So I go heavy, heavy, heavy on Izod. And then next uh, we've got Nautica. Once again, Nautica is something that is like Izod. It's they're really oversaturated. Let's be honest. Like Izod, Nautica, um, Nike Polo stuff. It's all very, very saturated on eBay. However, it does sell. And if you're pricing it right and you're strategizing and you're optimizing your listings, you could do really well selling this stuff. It's just getting to that point of being optimized and having everything set up the way that it should be set up for them to sell. With these, I do have this vintage Nautica button down right here. I've got a few polos. I got a button down shirt here, another polo, stripes, solids. I have found for me that the more crazy the colors or the uh, more exciting the pattern, the better they are. Like a basic white button down Nautica shirt probably won't sell as good, uh, in my opinion, as uh, like a brightly colored plaid Nautica shirt. So uh, that's just kind of what I look for. I look for exciting patterns. I look for stripes. I look for colorful shirts. Next, we've got 
the uh, the Hollister shirt right there. We've got the Vans shirt that I showed you before. The basic Vans with the with the logo on the front. I've got this New Balance sleeveless running shirt. This is uh, very similar to that Nike shirt. I do like to take risks or take chances on some brands. And so there's one brand here, Fairlane and Sons. I'll let you see that tag there. Um, I've never sold one of these. I'm not familiar with them. However, uh, there were some sold comps and I thought I'll give it a shot and see how it does. We've got an Adidas Climalite. Uh, we've, it's sleeveless running shirt, workout shirt. Uh, Johnson & Murphy, any Johnson & Murphy plaid button down or striped button down shirt typically does well. I was super pumped about this. I'm not sure what this style is called. I'm thinking just a blazer. Uh, if you know the exact style to this where it's collarless, uh, full length sleeves, but it's got buttons, uh, drop that down in the comment if you know this particular style. Uh, this is a Pendleton Wool Company. I'll let you see that right there. This is a Pendleton Wool Women's Jacket and they wanted $8.96 for it. However, because we averaged the price down, uh, the price came out to less than $4 per item. Found this Diamond Supply shirt, Diamond Supply Company shirt. Uh, not gonna go for a lot of money, but buying something for $3.50 or whatever I paid for it, and then uh, getting $12, $15 for it, plus shipping is definitely the move that we're trying to make here. All right, two other women's uh, items that we got here. Uh, this one is called French Connection. I'm not familiar with this brand. Once again, trying brands out, testing things. The reason I got this is for the look of it because it's, it's perforated. It's got all these little holes in it which is something different. It's something that stands out. It's different than uh, what you might normally see. It's not your usual shirt or sweater. Uh, this is something that is a little bit different. And so uh, that's why I picked this up. French Connection, not familiar with the brand. I looked it up. There were some sold comps kind of in the price point that I'm looking for. Hopefully this does well. I'll keep you posted. Then we've got this Volcom uh, lace shirt. Volcom sells well for me and it's a uh, women's lace shirt, see-through, made of lace. Next, we've got a two-piece of uh, Tommy Bahama. Once again, we've got the plaid, colorful, and then this, uh, it's basically a seersucker shirt, uh, seersucker material, uh, Tommy Bahama. This is a vintage Eddie Bauer mock turtleneck, so uh, definitely going to be getting a few bucks off of this. Got a basic uh, striped Carhartt t-shirt. Think that we will have no problem selling this. We've got Volcom, we've got a PGA Tour. This is a PJ Mark shirt. Normally I wouldn't pick a PJ Mark, but this is, it is a short sleeve thermal camouflage PJ Mark shirt. So I did pick it up for those three reasons. There was one other sold comp right at $20 plus shipping. And so uh, it fit my margins and it fit what I'm doing. Two quick silver shirts right here. We've got one with the logo on it. This will probably go for about 12 to $14. Uh, plus shipping and then a quick silver short sleeve button down shirt i did find this long sleeve polo lily pulitzer shirt this is the gulf stream polo uh long sleeve like i said i found this exact comp for 35 dollars plus shipping so i'm very happy to have found this particular shirt and i think we'll do it very well selling it i've sold lily pulitzer in the past and this brand does very well for me so always be on the lookout for a little palm tree right there for the logo here we go with the vineyard vines this is the quarter zip sweater that i told you about in the beginning second to last for this haul of uh, thrift store items to sell on ebay is this callaway golf quarter zip sweater finally last but not least certainly not least uh, i was going through the women's jeans just kind of browsing through and i'm only looking for a few desirable brands one of them being the brand miss me uh, but i did come across this pair of free people this is free people jeans this is not a super high priced item uh, this particular model goes for about 25 to 35 dollars plus shipping depending on the size and so uh, i did pick these up got them for less than four bucks averaged out so Free People is obviously a good brand to look out for. Typically, I try to stay away from jeans just because I have so many, but when you find a really desirable pair out in the wild, might as well pick it up and add it to uh, add it to the list of things, right? All right, so those are the brands and the types of things that I'm looking for to sell on eBay and Poshmark. Uh, when it comes to shirts and sweaters, we didn't get any shorts, but that's okay. Now let's talk about the list of things that I'm looking at and looking for when buying a shirt in order to sell on eBay. Uh, first off is overall condition. Is it stained? Is it ripped? Is it torn anywhere? If it is ripped, torn, or stained anywhere, it's gone. Uh, I had to throw a shirt away today because in the thrift store, I just missed some stains that were on the front that would not come out. And unfortunately, that shirt had to go away. So rips, tears, stains, those are the first few things. The next thing I'm looking for is uh, wear as far as like around the collar. Sometimes it'll be really nasty and I guess this falls under 
stains or tears, but sometimes it can be really worn out or yellowed stains kind of in the neck area. I wanna stay away from those things. I also wanna stay away from armpit stains. This all falls under stains. I don't know why I didn't just group it with stains, but armpit stains. Do they smell? If you're buying men's shirts especially, smell them. Smell them and make sure that they don't stink in the armpits because sometimes you get shirts that just, no matter what, the smell is not coming out. It's there for life. So don't buy shirts that have smells in the armpits. The next thing is buttons. For this shirt, does this shirt have all of its buttons? Yes, it does. Uh, does it have its collar buttons? Does it have its sleeve buttons? Like on the cuffs, does it have the little, uh, the little opening right there buttons? Yes or no? Next thing, does it have all of its tags? I mean, you can buy a shirt without one of the tags, like the size tag, because you can measure it. You can even know what the size is just by measuring it. However, does it have tags in order to inform the buyer what brand it is and what uh, what size, where it's made, what it's made of? Some other things that I really pay attention to and look for, typically, uh, with this, because it's a red tag IZOD, um, I kind of just pick these up anytime I see them. The red tag does really well for me for whatever reason. I don't have anything to substantiate that or, or, or know why red tag IZOD does better than normal, but it does. So I pick them up. However, if you can get any kind of like embroidery, embellishments, or anything on the chest that kind of stands out, you know, with, um, for instance, with Tommy Hilfiger, this is a jacket that I have listed. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger has all these little things all over it, right? You got the flag there, you've got the name embroidered on it. On the back, you've got it on the neck, you've got this bright green hood. Tommy Hilfiger does really well with putting uh, embellishments or things that stand out and pop. Even with something like Nautica, something as simple as just the little sail that's on the front, the little sailboat, Nautica does really well selling, especially when it has those things. And then obviously we cannot forget sold comps. You have to check the sold comps. Just because a shirt matches up with all those things, it's clean, no stains, no rips, no tears, no odors, no armpit gunk. Uh, it's got the embellishments. It's got kind of a cool, crazy pattern. If that shirt does not have sold comps, it's going to be hard to sell. So the final thing that I have to say is check those sold comps. If you check the sold comps and you see that things are selling for uh, the price point that you're looking at, then definitely pick them up. So for this particular lot, I picked up 40 items for a total of $130.70. Out the door, that's $3.26 per item. Basically, my strategy is I'm trying to sell these for $18 to $20 plus shipping. So when it's all said and done, I should walk away with about $10 of profit per item. One thing I like about selling shirts and shorts is there's very little prep time. With shoes, when you're selling shoes, and I still sell shoes, that's my number one seller. I love them, but when selling shoes, sometimes you're capped by how much inventory is available, how much you can actually get processed in a day, and uh, the cleaning. Cleaning takes a lot of time. Whenever you have something like shirts and shorts where it doesn't take any cleaning, very minimal if anything, then uh, you can just process them a lot faster. Set them up, photograph them, get them listed, and get them sold. If you wanna learn more about how I photograph shirts, check out this video right here. If you want to learn more about checking sold comps, so important, check this video right here. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next video.